The Lotus car company has staggered from one financial crisis to another in the past couple of decades or so. However, stability has finally been reached and probably due to this car, the Lotus Elise. Now, as you can see, it's a soft top, the Elise. This thing comes off, but it takes far too long and it's too complicated. I'm not even gonna bother to show you. You've got to do and do all sorts of catches here. There's some roof bars to come out and all that sort of thing. It takes too long to do quickly, but Getting into the Elise is an art in itself because it has a very high sill here. So in trousers, you wouldn't want a lady in a posh skirt to try. You have to kind of manoeuvre yourself in and drop yourself down like that. I think the Elise is a car best used for special occasions and track days, but not as an everyday car. <laughs> Cast your mind back to when you were young and you used to get taken by your parents to a fun fair or an amusement park and there always used to be the go-kart rides. Well, driving a go-kart and driving the Lotus Elise are not dissimilar. You get that low-down feeling through the seat of your pants. You can feel the road racing beneath you. It's a great fun car to drive but there are no creature comforts in this car. You get the engine right behind you which is very very noisy no effort to sort of dampen the sound down whatsoever change gear high through the revs it's just a wonderful fun car to drive now if you're thinking that yeah maybe a Lotus Elise is the right sort of used car for me well the great news is that there are plenty of used examples on the market there are two versions to look out for there's the basic 1.8 which produces 118 brake horsepower or there's the more powerful unit, which is this car that we're driving. Nominated the 111S, it uses Rover's K-Series engine, and it produces 143 brake horsepower, so quite a bit more power. Now, none of those figures sound tremendously powerful, but don't forget you've got a stripped out, very light car, so it is quick. You feel every bump, every slight undulation in the road and potholes in this car are an absolute nightmare. They send a real shiver through your spine. What about performance in the Elise? Well, in this 111S, you're talking about 0 to 60 in about five and a half seconds, which is pretty good. 0 to 100 in 14 seconds, top speed of about 130 miles an hour. And I'd like to kind of run through, as I normally do, the specification of the cars that we drive but the specification is so sparse on the Elise range that it's hardly worth it. You get a five-speed gearbox, you get alloy wheels, and um, that's about it. So the all-important question, what do you have to pay to get a good Elise? Well, this example, this 111S, would have cost around £27,000 when it was new, but it would now retail for about £18,000. This car has done, what, 14,000 miles, and it's about 18 months, two years old, so it's not bad. Early Elise's, well, you can look for a P-Reg example and pay as little as £12,000 for a really good one. The Elise may not be the prettiest roadster on the market, but on a pound per thrills basis, is there anything better? Some cars' build quality can leave a bit to be desired, and for me, the Elise sounded a lot quicker than it actually was.